Hey, what is up guys? Jay Burton here, and today I want to bring you a guide on how to be a DPSer in arenas. I know this sounds dumb, but in the eyes of somebody who is new to PvP, or just been doing PvP for a while and not being successful, this might help. So if I was to ask a brand new person, hey man, what do you think is the most important goal, the most important thing you should do in arenas? They might say like, oh, well, I like to kill. <laughs> yeah, that's important but not the most important thing. There's three things to consider. The first one, keep your healer alive. This is the top priority. If your healer dies, you don't get heals. Second thing, keep yourself alive. If you're dead, you can't kill people. Third thing, be offensive. After, let's say your healer is doing good, your health is doing good, then you need to move on to offensive, which is do damage, Interrupt and CC. Technically the CC can be on the defensive part too, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it in this category. So keep your healer alive, keep yourself alive, then be offensive. It's in a Q system. Follow it like that. Alright, so let's go into the first thing, which is keep your healer alive. How do we do that? But they should be calling well, out things when they're in Let's trouble. say there's a DK on your healer. So for example, your healer You're should up not here really DPSing have to call somebody this out all the time. and your healer is down there by that pillar. You notice they're in trouble, you need to switch to them. Because that DK is like not falling for jukes from the healer. Or they just interrupted them or stun them. You need to get down there, get on the DK, hamstring, and start DPSing them. This does two things you slow them so your healer can get away, and you're doing damage to him, which means he's most likely out of line of sight of his healer. So either he's going to have to pop defensives or run to his healer, or the healer is going to have to get out of position and get out in the open and try to heal him, which makes the healer vulnerable to interrupts and CCs. So switching targets can also help you be more defensive, even if you're doing it just to peel off your healer. It's not like you're losing out on you know getting damage done, so you gotta, gotta remember that. Now don't tunnel vision, this is hard. If you're about to kill somebody, they're like 25% health, but your healer is really in trouble of dying. Let that healer take precedence. Switch to keep your healer alive. It is so hard not to get bloodthirsty when you're so close to getting that kill. But you, just, you gotta stay clear of mind. On a side note, if you're a melee and you're new in arenas, you gotta learn to stay calm. You're gonna get CC'd and rooted and slowed and kited all the time. Even when you're getting close to getting a kill and they get away, do not get mad. Getting mad is the most annoying thing. It's one of the reasons why I hate queuing up with random people. Excuse my language, but I swear, 80% of the people I queue up with start bitching. I do not like using curse or anything to, like, ventrilo or whatever, because I will hear these guys start nerd raging and bitching about everything, getting pissed. Oh my god, you're not dispelling me, even though I'm dis dispelling on cooldown. Or they can't get away, and then they start saying things like, my class is underpowered, that class is overpowered, nerf them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to go on a rant, but that makes me so mad. You gotta stay calm. Do not start complaining. If somebody gets away from you, alright, that's okay. They had to use something to get away. So, if you can keep up to them, maybe they won't have it next time. Be calm. If you get mad, you're gonna make mistakes. You're not gonna communicate too well with your teammates. You're not gonna be very observative of your teammates. You might, you know, make some bad calls, like interrupt something that you don't need to interrupt, or burst when you don't need to burst. Stay calm. <laughs> okay, sorry, I need to just get that out there. It's very important, though. Okay, so switching to your healer, well, somebody on your healer, will help out a lot. Just to recap, it'll hurt them, the enemy that's on your healer, make them potentially pop cooldowns to stay alive, and maybe bring their healer out in the open to help heal that person. Second thing is if you have cooldowns that can help keep your healer alive, don't just pop them when you think you need to. Because if your healer already pops some defensives and they're going to live, you don't need to overlap with this. Like, for example, Warrior's Rallying Cry. It's a three-minute cooldown. You don't want to just waste that. You know, keep talking with your healer, communicate. And if you notice they're stunned and they can't pop anything, yeah, it's a good time. Rallying cry, boom. Just don't waste it and don't overlap it. Communication with your healer is very important. Hey man, do you need my rallying cry? Do you want to rally and cry? Do you need it? Hey. Hey idiot, talk to me. <laughs> if they don't reply to you, just cast it. Don't call him an idiot. <laughs> 
Okay, so don't overlap CCs or CDs. Okay, now, the next thing, keep yourself alive. How do we do that? Well, <laughs> first thing obviously is cooldowns. Now do not just pop your defensive cooldowns when you feel like it's a good time, okay? Your healer really needs to be in charge of your cooldowns. Do not just pop something. A lot of times your healer will pop some cooldown to keep you up. You do not want to overlap cooldowns. Once again, overlapping cooldowns is bad. If your uh, Holy Pally pops Avenge or uh, well, pops their wings, where you know they get increased haste and such, you don't want to just pop a dab of sword if you don't need to. Communicate with the healer. Um, if your healer's like, I don't want to trinket this, hey, that's fine. I use that by the sword. You're okay. You can save your trinket. If their trinket is on cooldown and they can't trinket to get out of a stun, they should tell you. If they don't, they're doing a bad job on their part. But be watching for that, and that's a good time to pop a defensive if you're low on health. Do not overlap your defensives with your, t your healer uh, cooldowns. Communication, once again, is very important. Now, second thing is positioning. Positioning is very important to you staying alive, including your team. So, let's say you're up here, and the enemy healer is below you. And you don't tell your healer anything, right? You're just like, oh, I'm going to go down here, da -da 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 -da, and you're on the enemy healer. Your healer is still up top, right? And now you're getting DPS'd by one of the enemy, you know, DPSers. This is bad, because now your healer is like, what the heck? You're out of line of sight. And they'll, they'll notice you drop below, and they're like, oh my god, you idiot. So now you're not getting heals. Your healer has to move into a vulnerable position. They gotta drop down, get into somewhere out in the open where they can be CC'd or interrupted, or, and or, this could also be both situations, you have to pop your defensive cooldowns, even when they're not bursting, all because you decided to give up good positioning for bad positioning. Be smart about things. Communication, once again, is very important. If on maps with bridges like this, you're gonna drop down, I'm dropping down, going to the healer. Dropping down, dropping down. Boom. I wouldn't actually recommend that situation, though. You're probably just better off DPSing somebody up here, because that means the healer isn't line of sight, and they have to come up the ramp. Yeah, you, you really shouldn't drop down. But anyways, that's just it, an example. You know, don't just run around a pillar where you're going to force your, t your healer out in the open. And you're going to pop defensives. Communication, very important. Make sure everybody has icons above their heads so you can see where they're at all the time. Once again, very important, because you need to know where your teammates are at. Because if, if you're behind on a pillar and you're getting wrecked and your healer, you're like, where's my healer at? You don't want to run away from them. If you notice they're over here on the, like on top of that little stone slab, like, oh, well, he's up there because I have an icon above his head. And you're oak leap, boom. And you're over there. Really important. Make good position plays. Know where your teammates' positions are at. Okay, now let's go on to the third thing. Be offensive. Now that we know our healer is okay, we're okay, we can for sure be offensive. So, if you... Holy crap. Oh, I, I thought that... Sorry. I never noticed that before. God. That's brutal. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you have good spammable CC, like Fears and Polymorphs, you need to make sure you're using those. If you're tunnel visioning on somebody, trying to kill somebody, and you're not doing CCs, you're doing it wrong. This is very important. Because a lot of times, if you're about to get a kill, and you're not CCing the enemy, the enemy will probably have a interrupt, stun, CC, something to peel you off from getting that kill. Get your CCs going. Let's see. Interrupts. It's important to interrupt the right thing. Some of the most important things to interrupt, CCs, uh, you know, polymorphs, fears, cyclones, really important. But also, heals. If the healer is, you know, he has to come out in the open for a second and you're DPSing somebody, you notice, you notice where the enemy healer is at, boom, get an interrupt. Hell yeah, you know. But uh, keeping your, C your, your healer from being interrupted is very important. Very important. That goes back to rule number one, which is keep your healer, well, yeah, keep your healer alive. Actually, that could be rule number two. <laughs> because if, if your healer's getting polymorphed, they're going to live. But you're going to die. Anyways, it takes precedence over actually killing somebody in my Q system. So, oh god, somebody wrote in here. I'm not fully geared. Oh, it's a low 75. 
I don't kill. Anyway, so, um, do interrupts, CCs, anything you can, you can to help assist the kills, okay? Then you can actually go for that kill. Just make sure you don't tunnel vision on the kill and forget to use interrupts and CCs. Um, a lot of times you can chain your CCs with your teammates. For example, something really common. This is actually, I love watching it uh, when Venruki, Sidu, and uh, Smexen do threes. With uh, Warrior, Mage, Healer. Uh, Shaman. A lot of times Venruki, like when they're versing double melee teams, Venruki will have a hard time getting a deep freeze into Sheep off. So, Smexen, he will always take his... Shockwave stun. If you you can stun up to three targets at once, you know, and if it hits three people, it reduces the cooldown by twenty seconds. So if you can get a triple stun, nobody can interrupt Venruki when he goes to do his deep freeze into sheep, right? Really good. So, depending on your comp, you can do a lot of these cool things. I'm not saying every comp um, will work above two K, but don't feel restricted to have to use RMD, WLS, RLS. God comp, all these specific comps, you know. Think about your cooldowns and how you can chain them together. Or interrupts too, and CCs. Okay guys, that's all I got. Sorry about the staggering and how I was talking. I'm trying to cover a lot of information at once. I've probably refilmed this about six times. <laughs> I'm going to stick with this one. If you guys enjoyed that video, hit that subscribe button for me. Alright guys, see ya. I'm coming up to the side on this. Boom. Goodbye, Bastion. Hanzo, come here, baby. Come here, baby. Oh, killed him right outside his spawn. Oh, he just... He just... Oh, shit. Yeah. That's some Kree combo, baby.